Welcome back. In the last video I introduced a basic monitor module and I started to make a point that I never finished so I want to do that now. Real quick I'm going to hook up the, this addressable panel to the same monitor module that we looked at in the last video in FMM1. Again that's a notifier part. And I made a comment that you can't hook a 24 volt smoke detector up to the conventional side of one of these modules. You can only hook a normally open contact closure device. <clears throat> and the reason is, if you look at what's connected to this module, the only, the only source of power is the data circuit. On a notifier panel, the data circuit is about 14 to 15 volts DC, um, and it's powering, it can be powering over 300 devices depending on the panel. There's just not enough power available to. It's just not the right type of power. It's it's a it's a data circuit. There's no way to power up a twenty a, a smoke detector that needs 24 volts. So it's it, you can only you can only hook up conventional devices that require that basically draw no power when they are in their standby state. So hopefully that makes sense. Now one topic that I haven't introduced at all yet on any of my videos is different classes of circuits. Um, I'm not going to get in depth, uh, I'm not going to explain that too much in depth right now, but I do want to point out that these monitor modules you can, you can use, for an FMM1, you can make it a class A or class B circuit. So every circuit that we've looked at so far has been class B. And that's not entirely true because there's different, if, if it's a data circuit, it's not technically called class B. If it's, an, if it's a horn circuit, it's not technically called class B. There's different classes. But basically, the difference between class A and class B is if you have, let's say I just have um, power out of this module, or if it were a conventional circuit, you know, power in and out of each device, and then at the end, I'd have an end-aligned resistor, right? It just, the, the, the circuit leaves the panel, or in this case, the module, and it never returns. You'd put your resistor at the end of the circuit. Well, a class A circuit is where it goes out and comes back. And I'll explain the benefit of that. Now, I have personally never seen a monitor module hooked up as a class A. I've seen conventional panels that have class A circuits. You, you know, you see that quite a bit. But a monitor module, you do have the capability of hooking it up this way, although, like I said, I've never seen it. And in this case, when you do that, you put your resistor right here at terminals 8 and 9. So this, this terminal 6 and 7, it still sees a resistor. But here's the advantage. Basically, in a class A circuit, you would have this module would be putting out um, its power on both terminals 6 and 7 and on 8 and 9. So if I were to come in and cut just one wire, let's say I cut the wire right here. There's, you know, whatever. The contractor's doing work and he cuts. I could cut both of these wires. Well, all of these devices are still going to work because the panel is putting out voltage. You're going to get a trouble because there's no current flowing. You're not going to see this, you know, the panel, this, these terminals 6 and 7 aren't going to see the resistor. But all the devices would still work in this state because it's pumping out voltage from terminals 8 and 9 and from terminals 6 and 7. So all these devices are still getting power. And I'll explain that more in the future. Um, you know, I'll go through Class A circuits more at some point, but for right now, I just wanted to explain that these uh, FMM1 monitor modules do have that capability. So now there's a couple different types of monitor modules. The next one I want to look at is called an FMM101, and it's called a mini module. The way I drew it, it looks about the same size, but these are, um, if you haven't seen these before, uh, I should have looked up the size, I could have given it to you, but basically they'll fit tucked away in a standard junction box. And these, these, the yellow and purple wires and the red and black wires are permanently fixed internally here. There's no terminals where you can make any kind of connections, like screw terminals. All you would do is wire nut um, or use a terminal block to connect to these circuits. So now th I just described a class A circuit. The, the basic difference between this mini module and a monitor module is that you cannot, you cannot connect a class A circuit to this mini module. The only connections you have are data, so you go red to red, and you usually use a wire nut right there to connect those two. You go black to black, it's positive to positive, negative to negative, and on the output side, you'd be connecting to whatever normally open device um, you know that you were that you were dealing with. So in this case, I drew what looks like the back of a heat detector. So I can just 
wire up one wire to purple, one wire to yellow, and then I'd put my resistor across here. So current's going to flow. Yeah, I don't remember which one of these is positive or negative, but it doesn't matter because you're always just using a you know a contact, a normally open device that doesn't draw any current. And so that's how you would monitor um, the heat detector. So you see these quite a bit. They'll be in junction boxes behind heat detectors. Sometimes you see them on Ansel systems. They'll be tucked away in an Ansel cabinet. Um, the only you know you set the address the same way. The only difference is, like I said, they're smaller, and you could not use a Class A circuit um, if that were required. The next type of module I want to go through is called an, the notifier part number is FDM, and that is um, I think it stands for a field dual module. So on this one, it kind of looks like an FMM, except the difference is. On terminals 8 and 9 here, this isn't a return for terminal 6 and 7. This module, the dual module, automatically takes up two addresses. So whatever I set this address to, let's say I set this to address 1. I turn this screw on the 1's place to 1. Terminals 6 and 7 are automatically going to be address 1, and terminals 8 and 9 are going to take the next highest address in, in, in sequence. So terminals 8 and 9 would now be address 2 automatically. So the only thing I would set would be the first number, the lower number, like I said, in this case, I, I'm just going to pick address one, even though the arrows aren't showing it. Let's say I, let's say I do that. We'll ignore the arrow that was there before. Now this is address one. Terminals eight and nine automatically become address two. So quickly, we'll hook this up to the panel. You know, the SLC goes to the negative goes to terminal one, and then it will go out to the next device. Positive to terminal two out to the next device. So that's the input. And now I have two separate circuits here. So the most common application for, I mean, you could use it for whatever, but the most common application you'll see is in a stairway. Oftentimes in a stairway of a multi-story building, there'll be a water flow and a valve tamper for, um, th that covers the, for the sprinkler system on that floor. So if you picture a riser in a building that goes up through all of the floors and then it branches off on each floor, you want to know specifically where your alarm is. There'll be a shutoff valve first and then a water flow switch after the, I didn't really, I, if I had planned this better, I could have drawn that branch. But um, let's say that we're going to hook our water flow. Let's say we're going to hook our valve tamper up to the first address here. So the valve tamper is just a normally open contact device. So this would be my normally open contact. I'll take terminal six down to common and I'll put my resistor across there. Now I'll hook up the water flow the same way, positive to either one of these. The water flow switch is typical. Well, the tampers usually have two terminals as well, but just for simplicity, I only drew one. So we're going to go common normally open with the resistor in parallel. And again, if either one of these devices were activated, this, the um, armature would change states. So if, this, if water started flowing, the common terminal would switch from common to normally open. That's where the continuity would be. So if we follow the current in that, situ in that scenario, it wouldn't, most of it wouldn't go through the resistor because it's going to take the path of least resistance. There's going to be an increase of current on terminals 8 and 9, which the module knows is now address 2. It's going to tell the panel address 2 is activated. And then whatever I've programmed into that panel, you know, I would have told it address 2 is a water flow for the second floor or whatever the case may be. Uh, and the same would have been true of the valve tamper, but that would have been um, address 1. Now this, just like the mini module, can only be a class B type circuit. You can't have, obviously there's not enough terminals available for class A. But again, that's commonly how that's, that's hooked up. So there's one more type of monitor module that I'll get into, but that's not gonna happen in this video. So I will see you in the next video.